of a busy day, but an exciting day. Uh, a little bit different uh, uh, for me. Uh, I'm used to kind of handling my two, three, four guys, uh, and that's that's it, and getting them on the phone with the head coach. Uh, but today's been a little bit different. Got to talk to a lot of guys and a lot of families uh, who are extremely excited uh, about being a Ram. Uh, but before we get talking about uh, each individual guy, uh, I want to thank everybody that's uh, been involved with recruiting. Uh, a lot of times uh, when you think about recruiting, you think about uh, the coaches or the head coaches that do all the work. Uh, and those guys uh, that you'll get a chance to talk to today did an exceptional job uh, out on the road uh, signing this class. Uh, but I uh, also wanted to thank uh, this university as a whole, uh, from uh, the deans uh, to professors, uh, who met with each individual kid that came on campus, uh, uh, to our administration, uh, to, the, to, the, to the people in the dining halls, to the people that work the dorms, uh, to our support staff uh, in the weight room, in the training room, in the equipment room, the support staff on the second floor. Uh, everybody did an outstanding job. Uh, and, and, and basically, they were themselves. And that's what sells uh, Colorado State uh, is the people. Uh, and that was one of our big selling points is – uh, the university and the people uh, that are involved in the university. Not just myself, not just the nine full-time coaches, uh, but the people that you're going to surround yourself uh, here in the next four or five years are going to help you grow and enjoy the college experience. Uh, so I just wanted to thank those, those people, and uh, we wouldn't have been able to do uh, what we do without them in recruiting. Uh, I am extremely excited about the first class uh, here at Colorado State. Uh, for our season. Uh, as you know, it was not a big class, uh, uh, but uh, it was still a little bit tough uh, coming in with the extended dead period this year uh, that we had because of the, the new college football playoff format uh, where we didn't get on the road. I think January 15th was the first day. Uh, so we had a little bit uh, over two weeks. Uh, you know, the, the previous staff, uh, I've said it uh, numerous times to a couple of you guys that I've talked to. They did, they did an outstanding job building a class and building relationships with these guys. Uh, you know, but we still had to go out there and reestablish relationships and uh, get to know these, these young men and their families uh, on an individual basis. Uh, and, th and that really shows to the character of these student athletes uh, that are signed here to play at Colorado State. Uh, you know, they never really wavered on their commitments. Uh, you know, we had to talk about our vision and our program and who we are. Uh, but they not only love the former staff, but they love Colorado State University. Uh, and I said that in my opening press conference, uh, that I want people that want to be at Colorado State. Uh, I truly believe if you get guys for the right reasons uh, and they want to go to a place and want to make a place special, you have a chance to do something special with your football program. Uh, and this is the first step today, is uh, building on what we have. Uh, I'm excited about these guys uh, as individuals. Uh, you know, I think if you look at it uh, first, you can see that we took care of our, our, our state primarily, uh, signing six guys from Colorado, and then Deshaun, really seven, uh, if you count Deshaun Mays, uh, uh, who's from uh, Pomona. Uh, you know, we want, I said in the opening press conference when I was hired that we want to recruit Colorado. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the phones today working 2016 and 2017 kids, and our first focus was Colorado. Uh, we want to make sure that we cover Colorado, and uh, the word is out there about Colorado State. Uh, the two and a half weeks that I was able to get on the road and get into high schools, uh, people know about Colorado State, and we want to continue to do that and build on that, uh, and today was one of those steps. Uh, so again, I'm excited about this first class and I'll open it up for any questions uh, that you might have. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, you know, I'm not uh, in the business really to talk about uh, overall number or roster management, uh, but uh, where we are right now, we feel, feel good about uh, where we are we'll, uh, as far as the total roster management. So, say, not, not today. We're not expecting any more today. How much time did you actually have to kind of decipher what you felt you had on roster? Yeah. Who was already committed and what? Yeah. You still have? It was a little bit difficult. Uh, the school didn't start back in session here uh, until January 20th. Uh, you know, we were able to pull out film and watch game film, but we also watched a lot of practice film. 
uh, of our current uh, current players. Uh, but you know, excuse me, it's one thing to watch them on film, but not be able to see them in person uh, and see their body types and see their builds. Uh, but you know, we based it a lot on uh, need of uh, numbers. Uh, you know, every every staff has you know going to have X number of linemen, you're going to have X number of tight ends, X number of running backs, receivers, and kind of really base it off of that. Uh, you know, and tried to fill a few few needs that uh, after watching film and talking with uh, guys from the fir- former staff and then uh, current guys that uh, stayed on with us here, uh, continued to work in what we thought was the best direction, and then and a couple of them were best available guys. Uh, but if you look at this overall class, I. I you know, I think the common theme, uh, you will see guys that have uh, uh, size. Uh, we want to sign long, got longer guys, taller guys uh, that have a big upside uh, because, uh, you know, quite frankly, it's about identifying those guys and then developing them. Uh, you know, so, you know, just take a guy, for instance, uh, Salofi from right here in Rocky Mount, uh, 6'6", 265, 270 pounds. Uh, we think he has a huge upside, a very high ceiling. Uh, that you know, it's going to be our job to develop them, and uh, I think we've got those those pieces uh, of the puzzle in place, and looking forward to developing a guy like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we we graduate. Uh, it's either five or six defensive linemen uh, in this year's class. Uh, you know, we're we're kind of structuring away from a three-four to a, a four-three. Uh, so some of those outside backers will be D linemen now. So those are those those guys that are playing the front four uh, are we're kind of senior senior heavy laden uh, in that group. So we're trying to get some guys to replace uh, those guys for the future and build depth. Uh, and then offensive linemen, we're a little bit uh, low in the overall number and trying to get some quality guys uh, that uh, they have got a huge upside. Mike, how much having a small class, is that almost beneficial in the transition so that you can look at those 16 and 17 guys for down the road? No, no, no question. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we didn't have to sign uh, 25 guys. Uh, uh, you know, we, we had a small number and we had, I think it was eight eight or nine committed uh, when I took the job, uh, and we didn't lose uh, any of those guys. So we were ju- just basically filling four or five slots. Uh, we kind of focused on an area of need and, and attacked that, uh, but at the same time, uh, not neglecting the guys that were already committed, making sure we were spending quality time with them and seeing them every week and getting in their homes, uh, and not only letting those players uh, feel comfortable about who we were uh, as a staff, but also their parents and their loved ones. Well, you know, there, there's a little bit of uncertainty. Uh, you know, uh, you know, guys. You know, you say you're not committing because of people, uh, but a lot of times guys are committing because of people and coaching staffs. Uh, but like I alluded to in the beginning, uh, all these kids loved the area of Fort Collins, loved the town, loved the community, uh, and they also loved our players. Uh, I didn't, I didn't think those guys. Uh, you know, your players are a big part in recruiting too, and our players. Uh, you know and we'll probably talk about it here in a minute, but I, I truly believe there's a great culture. Uh, I, I feel we have a great team chemistry on this on this team. Uh, guys believe in one another. Uh, and, and, and when your team believes in one another and believes in what you're doing um, as a staff and as the pro in the program and in the university, they sell to the recruits as well. Uh, so these guys that had come on visits, uh, and we didn't have a chance to bring in visits. Uh, their, their experience here with the university and our current players helped a lot. Coach, can you talk about Max Donald coming down? Yeah, down the yeah I, I'm, I'm fired up about uh, Max. Uh, I actually, on my iPhone, uh, pulled him up on Huddle again last night and watched him. Uh, and then we have a little video for later uh, this afternoon. I was watching that this morning. Uh, with our video guys. Uh, Max is a uh, definition of a football player, in my opinion. Uh, he loves to play. Uh, he's very aggressive at linebacker. He's not afraid to put his uh, face in there. He will strike you. Uh, you know, he is not uh, one, of the, one of the taller guys, but he is very, very explosive. Uh, you know, being a state uh, champion in shot put and the discus uh, just tells how explosive this young man is. And, he is a guy that wanted to be at Colorado State, uh, and uh, you know, and like I've said from day one, I want guys that want to be here, and I really, truly expect Max to have an outstanding career here. Do you expect all these guys to show up and be here for summer, and even get a gray shirt? Or anything like 
No, we expect all, all these guys uh, to, to come in, in summer, um, you know, and we're going to try to get them in that first session. And as soon as we can get them here and get them acclimated to how we do things and how we train, uh, the better. You, I can't comment on a walk-on specifically, but uh, you know, any, any great program uh, is built on not just the 85 scholarship number, but uh, quality walk-ons. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do every year, uh, do our best to, to try to get guys here that are quality walk-ons that are going to help this program. Uh, you know, that was a lot. That's the way we did it at Georgia. There were a number of guys that contributed and earned starting jobs and earned scholarships, and it's going to be the same way here. Uh, you know, we're going to recruit uh, the walk on as hard as we would a scholarship player. Two of these guys that you're announcing today, you've already had a chance to yeah. at least get reports on. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've seen so far in Coleman? Well, I've actually seen a, a couple workouts uh, when I've gotten back in town on Friday. Uh, when we're doing our fourth quarter program, and uh, really excited about Mitch. Uh, you know, he's six four, six five. Uh, I'd say he weighs two forty five to two fifty five. I'm not exactly sure of his of his weight, uh, but he's moving around well. Uh, from the first workout to the one I saw last night, you can see a guy that's getting in shape. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited about him uh, and getting him in our program. Uh, he's he's you know we've got him. To play tight end, and there's there's a couple other good looking tight ends we've got out here on, on the roster that I'm excited about. I'm really excited about getting around all these guys, but uh, Mitch has done a good job heading back down from Coach Davis and his staff, and has really every day uh, went after it uh, and tried to get better. and And you can see the improvement. Colby uh, is a mid year freshman, which is a little bit more difficult. Uh, he's the only mid year freshman we have on campus. Uh, and we realize that, uh, and he's going through an adjustment phase, and he's out there every day working extremely hard, uh, and, and, and we just got to make sure that uh, Colby every day stays the course because it, you know, I actually had a, a mid-year kid last year at Georgia, and he was the only one. It's a little bit difficult when you come in, you're the only guy, and you don't have any other guys in your class, uh, but uh, Colby is uh, doing a great job. Uh, the older guys, the veterans on the team are taking him under his wing and making him feel, feel part of the family. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told JC. Uh, I think he has a huge upside. I think he's uh, still raw, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, he's got athletic ability. He makes plays with his legs. He's got a live arm. Uh, but there's a lot of things that we can tweak uh, fundamentally uh, as far as his footwork uh, that's going to make him a better football player. The one thing I like about JC when I got a chance to sit down with him and his parents is his desire to be great. Uh, you can you can see it in his eyes when you talk to him. You can hear it in his voice. He's determined to be a great player, uh, and he's got that special thing that you got to have to be a quarterback. Uh, the drive. Uh, so unless something changes, I, I feel he'll be a success for us here. Obviously, you go, you're looking for guys with talent to get in great play. In terms of character and yeah. mental makeup, what are you and your staff really looking for? What's what's that blueprint? Well, you know. Obviously, you said it. The first thing you're going to do is turn on the film, uh, and you're going to see if they can play. You're going to see if, if this guy can help you win the conference championship. Uh, and it, it, if they meet those criteria, and then when you verify their height and weight and, and feel like they've got the dimensions to develop, uh, then you check their, check their character. Uh, and you don't just talk to their coach. You're checking with the counselors, the teachers, the, uh, the, the trainer at, that might be at practice, a basketball coach that maybe doesn't coach him. You know, how is this guy viewed in school? Is he a guy that other kids in the school look up to? Uh, is he a guy that when he walks in the class, classroom, uh, He's about business. Uh, we want people here, uh, not want, we're going we're gonna to recruit and sign guys here. Uh, they're going to represent Colorado State in a first-class way, on and off the field. Uh, and, uh, you know, guys that uh, have less issues and, and are, are high-character guys, 
uh, with the talent are the ones that are going to be successful. Uh, not to say that uh, guys that aren't going to make mistakes and we're going to give guys second chances and help them help them grow up. Uh, but if guys uh, have uh, their life in order outside of athletics, tend to continue to rise when they enter school. So we're looking for guys that uh, when they get here, they're not only going to excel athletically, but they're going to excel in all areas. How critical is it to get in early on some of these guys, whether it's 16s and 17s, because the previous two staffs here have said that's really the key to success at Colorado State is getting on the best guys early, building that relationship so that when the, when the SEC schools or whoever else comes calling, you've already kind of got them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if some if some schools call it call, I don't know if we'll hold on. You know, uh, and that's that's the nature of where we are. Uh, but I, the key word you said uh, was relationships. Uh, we've got to start to build relationships with, uh, you know, all these young 2016 and even 2017 kids. Uh, not just relationship with the kids, but with the coaches uh, in these new areas. Uh, you know, Colorado's a new area for me to recruit. Uh, California is going to be a new area. Uh, you know, been in California maybe two times in 14 years. Uh, but it's about building relationships. It's about getting out, getting into schools, uh, have a chance to speak at a Glacier Clinic, uh, I think February 20th, uh, where a lot of Colorado coaches are going to be there. Talk to several on the phone. Uh, yes, I'm going to speak and, and talk some football, but the main purpose of going there is getting in front of these coaches, meeting them, inviting them on campus, opening our doors to those high school coaches uh, all across the country. Uh, and then, you know, it's just developing relationships. And if you sign a kid, it's taking care of that young man uh, and helping him grow and succeed and walk out of here with a degree. Uh, and if they know that you're going to take care of their, 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 their student athlete, you've got a better chance to, uh, to, uh, to sign them. Well, you know, you're, you're, well, two of them are JCs. Mitch is a, a transfer uh, from Vanderbilt. Uh, you know, when you recruit, recruit a junior college uh, uh, a player, uh, you're recruiting a guy to come in and make an impact. Uh, you feel like it, it's uh, – you may be, uh, you know, have a senior and a freshman and you don't have a junior or sophomore. You may, you know, have some young guys and you want to sign an older guy to come in and, and, and make an impact or compete. So – uh, we've signed these guys with the intention to come in and compete uh, and, and make an impact, uh, you know, so that they, they, they were recruited that way and told that, and uh, they have the desire to do that. But it's the same with recruiting high school kids. Uh, you know, we're recruiting them with the, with the intent of them coming in and playing. Uh, and, you know, I don't want a guy to come in with a plan that I'm going to redshirt or I'm going to wait my turn. Uh, I tell all these guys when I'm recruiting them, you're not waiting your turn. Your opportunity is right now, okay, because we're going to be recruiting guys in 2016. We're going to be recruiting guys in 2017 to come in here and play. And if you're sitting around waiting for your turn, then you might be passed by. You better come in uh, working your tail off every single day trying to get on that field. Now, if you're not ready, then you're not ready. Then we're going to redshirt you and get you ready. But there is no waiting your turn. It's come in and expect to play from day one. Well, well, you know, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of talented guys uh, on this list. Uh, I think really it's a little too premature for me to say. I have not been on the field with our current current team. I've seen them run around uh, and do some drills, agility drills, but we haven't put on the pads yet uh, and seen who really loves football. Uh, that's when the football is going to start when we put on the pads. Uh, so I'll probably have a better idea after spring, but uh, we've recruited all these guys uh, to come in with a mindset to play and get better every day. And if you got that mindset and worry about what you can control uh, and not the depth chart, then you got a chance to be a success. Every year, it's usually talked about football, maybe adding early signing period. Your thoughts on that, and given what you guys are going through, where you might yeah. have there been one. Well, uh, you know, this is my first year as a head coach, and, uh, you know, I've always, you know, well, that's the head coach can answer that question. I don't know. But, uh, I, I, you know, I, you know, being at a place, uh, you know, here, we're, we, you know, where it could be, you know, uh, 
uh, a team like you mentioned, SEC or Pac-12 come in and swoop a guy. If we if we offer them and they commit, then I, I'm for letting them sign right then. You know, uh, and if they want, you know, and they sign at some of those bigger schools and they're out of the way, and then it kind of opens the door for us to recruit guys and it makes it a little little clear. I think it's a little bit of a mess going on right now uh, with the early offering. Uh, I know, you know, it's what we have to do and what we have to sort through as coaches, but uh, I can't imagine if I was a high school coach having to deal with a lot of the stuff they're having to deal with uh, on a daily basis. One of the things you had talked about when we talked to you last month was about just trying to get a big, kind of a big, strong running back kind of guy who's yeah. very 20-25. Right. Does, does Isaiah fit that, or yeah. do you need to get some other guys in here at some point to fill that? No, I, I, you know, Isaiah was a guy from day one that we targeted. Uh, you know, the former staff was recruiting him. Uh, and, you know, I, I came in here for a day and left and got some notes on some guys. But uh, talking to uh, guys on the former staff and on the current staff, uh, Izzy was one of those guys and watched his film uh, at home in Athens and, and called him two or, two or three days after I got home and uh, just started building a relationship. Uh, Izzy is a, a, a very unique uh uh, individual. Uh, he's loved Colorado State, uh, and he even bought Colorado State gear before we even offered him. Uh, you know, they were recruiting him. I don't think they had offered him yet, and he'd bought the Colorado State gear, I, I believe, on Christmas Eve and, and gave, came in or, or the 23rd, and he gave it to his parents on, on Christmas Eve, and I didn't call to maybe the 26th or 27th. Uh, so kind of, you know, a Goes back to my, my my opening statement is uh, he wanted to be here, uh, and you know we're not gonna sign just guys because they want to be here. Uh, when we turn on the film, we see a big, strong running back, uh, and you know we'd like to have a running back that ran four three and uh, ran over everybody and made every cut. He could you know change direction and he had the straight line speed. Uh, but one of the the main things we look at uh, is for running backs, or, or, or I've done. Uh, is does the guy break tackles? Uh, can he turn a two-yard run into a four-yard run, to a four-yard run into a seven-yard run? Is he a guy that's going to move the chains? And does he have enough speed, if we block it right, that he can take it to the house? Uh, we, we believe Izzy's got good speed, but we also believe Izzy can break tackles and runs physical. Uh, so he was definitely a guy we targeted. Well, you know, again, it goes to your number. Uh, I do think we're a little bit low in the overall number. I do think we've got quality guys uh, coming back at receiver that have played in a lot of games, uh, uh, guys that have made plays uh, in conference games. And when you've got guys that have made plays, uh, that gives them experience. It's going to give them more confidence going into the next year. Uh, so that was a plus. Uh, you know, BC is a guy that uh, that the former staff had in camp, and uh, that he really impressed him in camp. He's a neat young man that's a, a outstanding track athlete. I think he qualified for four or five events last year in the state track meet. Uh, so that just speaks volumes of his athletic ability. I mean, I believe he's a pole vaulter uh, as well. And then uh, Braylon Scott is an athlete. Uh, who we have not decided uh, what side of the ball we're going to play him yet. Uh, you know, you see a lot of his highlights are him playing receiver, uh, and then he's playing a little bit of press man. Uh, we think he's a guy that could be a long corner. Uh, we think he's a guy that could be a safety that could roam in the middle of the field, uh, free safety type guy. And then we think he'd obviously excel at receiver. Uh, so we've got to kind of figure out where we're going to start him off at. Uh, but. Uh, He's he's a phenomenal athlete that, uh, you know, he's a guy that, uh, you know, quite frankly, when I turned on the film, I couldn't believe that a lot of more people weren't recruiting him. Uh, I think it's a lot to do with he's only played football uh, for two years, and he, I believe he transferred high schools and one of these guys that kind of got lost in the shuffle. But uh, our coaches got a chance to watch him play basketball, uh, just a phenomenal athlete. And, look, you know, and that's the kind of guy we're looking for. Uh, he's a long, rangy guy that's got a huge upside. We don't know what his body's going to do. You know, how much weight is he going to put in, put on? But uh, he's a guy that we're looking for that we're going to develop. And uh, wherever his body takes him, uh, that's where he'll play. Those 
I, you know, I feel like we won Colorado with the guys we recruited. Uh, you know, uh, these most of these guys were already uh, committed. Um, I think – I don't think. I know uh, Coach Marty English does an outstanding job in this state and is very well known and respected and has got a handle on uh, Colorado and Colorado kids. Uh, and went, like I said, we're going – every year we're going to try to win – Colorado, uh, we you know we feel like we win it every time we sign a guy from Colorado because we offered him a scholarship. Now, where it is on the rankings or where somebody ranks, uh, you know, it's too early to decide that. that that'll be decided on the field. Do you have a different viewpoint of the ranking system? <laughs> you're, out, you're away from the school that's always expected to be in the top ten. And yeah, I, I have the same really viewpoint that I did there. Uh, that's for the fans, uh, and it creates excitement and creates passion about the game, which I think makes college football great. Uh, uh, you know, it's fun, and, and, and but at the end of the day, you're going to turn on that tape and evaluate the kid, and it doesn't matter if he has five stars or two stars. Uh, some of our better players in my years at Georgia were guys that we signed the last two or three days or the night before signing day that had nothing or had two stars. Uh, it's about what you do with them and when you get them there and you're developing them about what's inside of them, uh, if they have that want to. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things that uh, it's fun, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be um, how, how you handle them when they get there and develop them and, and how they mature. It, it, it was it was uh, it, it was tough, uh, you know, because you know you're, you're trying to hire staff uh, and you're trying to get your current players on the phone and meet them, uh, guys that were in town, and then you're trying to talk to recruits, uh, and then but you can't go out on the road yet, you know, you can't you can't see them face to face. It's one thing to talk to a recruit on the phone, but it's another to get in front of them. It's one thing to talk to your current players on the phone, but it's another to have them walk in your office or have a team meeting. Uh, so that was that was the hardest thing with the transition is that we couldn't get out until January 15th and the current players weren't here to January 20th. Uh, so a lot was done uh, on the phone and evaluating. But again, we still had such a limited amount of scholarships, so we weren't trying to go you know crazy with evaluating. We narrowed it down, you know, you know, three or four guys per position and went after those guys and uh, filled our needs. Uh, but uh, you know, it's you know we got off the road. Uh, we had our last weekend, and then Monday and Tuesday of this week, uh, both offense and defense were in a room evaluating 2016 guys. Uh, and 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 there's a lot of guys that have been evaluated here, but it's mainly getting in there and each position coach describing to the other guys in the room what they're looking for in a player, and the coordinator talking about what we're looking for at a certain position. And now we know as a coaching staff what we're going out after. Uh, so we did that for the last two days. And uh, really, you know, I think our last fax in was in, in at 8.40 or 8.45. Uh, and from 7 o'clock until I walked up here, uh, I've been on the phone with underclassmen all day. I bet I've talked to at least 60 guys, uh, you know, from 2016 to 2017, uh, you know, and just, you know, kind of introductory, uh, a lot of – uh, offers, uh, that sort of thing, but just talking about building a relationship and letting them know about our junior days and letting them know that our coaches will be out in the spring and just starting to establish those relationships that we were talking about uh, a minute ago. Uh, and that's what it's going to be about from this point uh, until next signing day. Uh, there will be a lot of those guys that we talk to uh, that, you know, we won't get, but uh, we're going we're gonna to try to recruit every guy that we feel like can help us win, uh, and, and every day we're going to recruit. Every day we're going to get guys on the phone. Every day we're going to evaluate somebody. Uh, you got you got to recruit every single day, and it uh, doesn't matter. I'm going home tomorrow to see my family, but I'll have my phone out, and my wife might get mad at me, but I'm going to be direct messaging some kids that I talked to yesterday and uh, starting to build that relationship. Uh, no, no, Marty was huge uh, uh, for me to keep uh, on this staff. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, first of all, he's a great teacher uh, and a great coach, but he's a great person. 
Uh, and then when I've got when I went on the road a couple of days with Marty, uh, you know, you could tell he's very well respected, uh, and everybody and in the state and those players, uh, they know who Coach English is. Uh, and then I'm on the phone talking to guys, uh, just really excited that he's still part of Colorado State. Uh, and, you know, he loves Colorado State. He loves Fort Collins. He loves these players on this team. Uh, and I said that from day one, too, about the coaches. I want guys that want to coach uh, with me, and I want guys that want, want to coach at Colorado State. Uh, and I think he exemplifies that. Coach, for the community to get two kids from Rocky Mountain, just literally right down the street, what's it like for you to really grab those two and what does it mean to have them now? Well, you know, uh, it, it's awesome. They live, you know, they, they grew up, they grew up watching Colorado State. I right? grew up being a Ram, uh, and that's been their dream. Uh, you know, got, like I've said, guys that want to be here and guys that have dreamed of playing here tend to have more success. Uh, I was looking at a house yesterday in the realtor. All she could talk about was how the two local kids were coming to Colorado State and how happy she was and how happy her neighbors were. So the excitement right there, you can tell that. Uh, that's that's there's interest in those two young guys, and and there's going to be more loyalty for them uh, at Colorado State. There's going to be more incentive for them uh, to do to do great things here. Uh, and those two guys are great young men, great students uh, that uh, I believe are going to be success stories at Colorado State. Well, I, I hope so. You know, uh, obviously, the more you can recruit guys that uh, are in driving distance uh, to your university uh, is going to create more interest. And then, and then the product we put on the field. Uh, and that's what we're about right now is uh, building that product, product uh, downstairs in the weight room and outside on the practice fields uh, and then recruiting this class. Uh, we're trying to get guys here that are going to play a certain way and perform a certain way. And when they go out and hit the field on Saturdays, uh, they're going to represent Colorado State the right way. All right. All right. Thank you all.